G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. We're going to be looking at uh, installing OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Uh, that was our distro challenge last week, so I'm sort of still catching up on the videos. Um, so we shall get started on that. So um, let's start the install. Okay, so that's gone straight through, but when I was uh, installing on a laptop, we had to do the wireless setup. So that was, I was hoping to be trying, I was hoping to be able to show that, but uh, looks like we're not going to be able to, so that's fine. Let's move forward. So that's activate online repositories. Okay, so that looks like the normal repository. So I didn't do anything else. I think um, I'm not sure about the sources on that one, but we'll leave the other three anyway. So let's do that. Okay, so this is where we get the choices of, uh, let's see, desktop with GNOME, desktop with KDE. So uh, I, I chose the uh, desktop with GNOME, so I'm going to choose that one uh, because the rest of the video will be on the GNOME desktop anyway. I thought there was somewhere you could add a different desktop maybe it's the generic test desktop i'm not sure i'm not sure if somebody could let me know if that generic desktop if if you choose that one can you choose something besides kde and gnome gnome i'm not really sure but i went with the gnome one um, so i've already recorded my desktop experience with that but i haven't done the install so let's carry on there right so we are at the uh disk partitioning stage now um, for the installs that I have done I've done a few installs last week um, prior to this one here on VirtualBox but um, on all of those I did installs on existing partitions so that's easy to manage this one is however um, starting from scratch now I've had a bit of a look at this and a play around with it and what I've come up with is you've got with uh, expert partitioner start with current proposal or start with existing partitions now um, if we go to existing partitions you've got to work on this hard disk here now if you click on hard disks and then um, we go to edit hard disk um, we can choose EFI and go next but see it's not allowing me to choose the size so let's cancel that double click that okay so I'm on hard disk I need to be on SDA so if we choose SDA and then edit it's the same thing, isn't it? What if we go next on that? So that's created that on the 15.79. So, so maybe we need to go to partition table and create new partition. Yeah, let's delete all data. Uh, GPT, because we're on, I booted in EFI. So let's edit that now, can we? No. 
Okay. Edit hard disk. So why can we not choose the size of the disk? Where do we do that? So if we choose hard disk or SDA, what do we get there? We get that option. If we choose hard disks, we get a various amount of options here. So let's go edit partitions. And now we've got a t new tab called partitions. These tabs are not very outstanding. If you're not looking up there, you wouldn't know that it's changing tabs. So um, let's add a partition and see how we go with that. Here, that's... See, I find this installer a little bit the same as the Anaconda installer. It's, it's, it's quite powerful in itself, but also at the same time, not very intuitive if you haven't really used it before. So it's sort of, um, it's like the Anaconda installer, it misleads you. It, it doesn't prompt you for the next thing. It's, it's like it's for the next choice or whatever. That's what I found with the Anaconda install, and I'm, I'm finding the same thing here. So that's really weird. So we need, I'm going to make a boot partition to start with EFI. So we need to um, uh, what is it? 0 0.5, 0 0.5 gig, and uh, that should be all right. Start and finish. Yeah. Next, the size entered is invalid. Enter a size between one megabyte and fifteen point seven nine gigabytes. Uh, 0 0.5 gig okay EFI it's a fact yep fat partition boot EFI that's what we need partition ID Windows data Linux native. It's just an ID, so window. I don't know why I'd be selecting Windows by default. Let's go next. Okay, so we've done that. So then we need to get to the rest of the disk up here, which is hard disks. SDA partitions SDA1 is what we've already created boot EFI yeah. um, hard disk so if we choose that one so we can highlight that edit partition Linux native, no, that's that one there. Let's go back to hard disk. Can we double click that one? All right, so mm. Let's edit that again. I want to edit that partition. I don't want to, let's say, uh, boot, it's an EFI system. That's what it is. That's better. Um, so this one here, edit hard disk. To edit SDA, first delete, all, okay. Add partition, ah, okay. So let's just cancel that. So we click on that one, go to partitions and add partition. Makes me look like a complete noob. <laughs> uh, um, we 
got uh, that one there. Um, yep, we want to use the rest of that. And it's going to be the operating system. Next. And I don't want ButterFS. XT4. Linux native. Root. Next. Okay, so it's done. Do we need swap? Um, I didn't make a swap. So the other thing we can do, if we go back, uh, we'll exit that, and we go back to the start. Now, that's how you create your partitions manually. But however, it does give you a proposed partitions. So let's go with start with current proposal. And then it's created everything for you. Root and bootify. There you go. So there's no messing around there. Now what we can do here is um, edit this partition here. If we double click that. So where were we? We were here. So we, oh yeah, we go down to SDA2. And it's a ButterFS. So if we edit that and we change that to ext4, if that's what I want, you might want to leave it ButterFS. Go next. And that's it. So both done. So that's a lot easier. <laughs> um, but I just thought I'd go through the manual bit just to, just to show you um, I'm a little bit lost in that and I'm not afraid to admit it. I am lost. It's a completely different installer to what I'm used to. So this is about fourth or five time, fourth or fifth time I've used it. But um, that was a week and a half ago. I think I was doing this. So it's it's been a little while. So um, it takes me a few times to do this to sort of um, have it sort of etched in my memory. So uh, when it comes to Ubuntu, everything comes natural. Um, so let's go accept. And then next. Perth, Western Australia. Users full name. And username Colin, that's okay. Well, it's good that I'm recording this so I can look back and figure out what I did. <laughs> um, use this password. I don't want automatic login. Next. Installation settings. Bootloader Grub to EFI. Yep. Gnome Desktop Environment Wayland. We can change that. Yep, let's install that. Yep, install. Okay, so the install is complete and it looks like the system is restarting. So we'll just see what happens there. I don't know if the disk has um, ejected or not. Maybe not. Oh yeah, may have. Let's just get rid of scale mode. And we are logged into OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And that is the install for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So that is the install. And we shall go to uh, follow on from um, setting up the desktop on real hardware. And we'll go from there. So just to let you know, the um, installer I was going to install the last bit of it finishing, but actually it just finished and rebooted on its own. It didn't need any prompts or anything like that. It just uh, automatically restarted.
So we will have a look at the uh, desktop on real hardware and that would be the desktop that I used on the Big Daddy Linux Live. So my next video will be um, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed um, Setup, Look Around and Setup. And um, so keep an eye out for that one. Um, just thought I'd upload the install on its own. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. Hope you learned something like I did, because <laughs> I learned plenty. And uh, hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.